Good morning. Mathematicians, we're so glad you're here on this Tuesday morning. It's Miss Carnes here with you again today to get things started. And we'll have some of my teacher friends join us after. So today, I'm going to try out a new routine with fractions. And so I hope you'll help me to think through this and to um, think about what we know about fractions and some ways that we can put fractions together to figure out how many. So first, take a look at this and tell me what is the total number that's represented here on this poster? Take just a minute. How many do you think? Well, there's four, aren't there? There are four. <clears throat> Let's talk about how we know. So it's pretty easy for us to see that we have three holes on our poster. And then we also have four one-fourth size pieces. And if we have four one-fourths, what does that give us? Another hole, right? So we have three, and then with our four-fourths, another hole, so that gives us four. So I'm wondering, <clears throat> what if I hid some of these guys? Hmm? Could we think about <clears throat> what we're hiding if we know that um, we have four all together? Mm. You know, actually, hang on a second. I want to move this down just one more. There we go. This is really how I want it to look. Okay. So now I've hidden some. And let's think about how we could think about how many we have behind here knowing that our total is four. And on this one, we did get to take a look at that total together, right? So there's a lot of different ways we could think about it. And one thing that I might think about is trying to add on some other holes to get a little closer to four. So if I added on, hmm, one more hole, what does that get me to? It gets me to three and one-fourth, right? And then in that case, I only need, what else do I need? I need three more fourths to get me to four. So one and three-fourths plus our two and one-fourth should get me to four. Let's take a look underneath and see if we have one and three-fourths under here. Well, do we? We sure do. Here's our one hole, and here are our three-fourths. And that's going to give us our total that we were looking for of four. So that's one way to think about that. Let's try another. This one's a little trickier because I'm not going to show you all the shapes to start. I'm just going to tell you that the total that's on this poster is six. So, um, and of this six, what I can see are two and a half. So we have two and a half we can see, and we need to make six. So how many might be hiding, do you think, guys? Hmm. So we could think about this sort of like we did the other one, where we added on some more holes to get us closer to six. Another thing that we can think about is... Um, adding on fractions to make a whole number that we can work with to start. So I might think about adding another half to my two and a half that I already have visible, and then that gives me how many? Three, right? Two and a half plus another half gives me three, and then I know under here in some form there must be how many more? Three, right? Um, I could also think, just like I did the last time, about adding on um, some more holes to get me closer, to get me closer to six. So if I added three more holes to our two and a half, then that gets me to what? Five and a half. 
And then I only need one more half. So I think we settled on the fact that we would need to add to two and a half three more in order to get to six. Should we take a look? Let's see if we have three and a half under our screen. Hmm. It's kind of tricky, huh? So do we have three and a half under our screen? We actually do. And the way that we have our three and a half, right, is that we've got one, two holes, and three halves. And we can think about putting our halves together, can't we? So two and two halves gives us three, and another half gives us three and a half, which gives us our six. Two and a half plus three and a half gives us six. Let's try another one. So, this guy shows us there's a total of five up here, okay? And our total of five, what do you see that's out there? I see two and one-third. I need to figure out how many there are under here to make five. So again, there's a few ways I could think about that. I could think about adding on some more holes to make that work, right? So if I added on two more holes, that would get me to four and one third. So to make five, how many more do I need? Just two thirds more, right? Not even one. So we could add on two and two-thirds, maybe. Let's think about it another way. What if we wanted to take our two and a third and complete it to make three and then work from there? What would we add on? We'd have to add on two more thirds, right? And that would give us three. Then we know that under here, the total is going to be two more. So that would mean we'd added Two-thirds plus two more under here. Let's take a look and see if we have two and two-thirds hiding from us. Well, look at that. We sure do. Here's our two holes and our two-thirds to make five. And now we can see the whole five, right? We have four holes Oh, hmm. I think, let's think about that. Four, one, two, three, four, and three one-third pieces. That makes one more. Is it five? It is five. And did we add two and two-thirds? We sure did. I think we might have time for just one more. Let's take a look. This time, instead of ooh, using unit fractions, we are going to add on unit fractions or fractions that have just one share. This time, we're going to think about a fraction that has two shares. So this, the total here on this poster would add up to four. And what I can see is one and two-fourths, right? So we have a fraction that has more than one share, two-fourths instead of one-fourth. So how could we think about what's hiding under here if the total's four? Hmm. So what if I thought about making a hole out of my half? I could add another, because two-fourths is also the same as a half, right? So I could add on two-fourths, then that gives me two out here. And I know underneath, there has to be two more, right, in some way. 
So that's one way to think about it, right? There might be two and another half under there. What if I thought about adding on some more holes just to get me closer to four? So I could add three more holes to my two and two-fourths, and that gives me, oh, I can't do that, can I? That makes more than four. If I add three to one and a half, that gives me four and a half. It's too many. Let's try two. What if I add two to my one and a half? Where does that get me? It gets me to three and a half. So then I've added two, and there should be another half, which again is adding our, let's see, what did we get? To make our four. Oh, a little extra sticky here. So did we add on our two and a half to make four? One and two-fourths, and two and two-fourths gives us four. Thank you guys for helping me to think about fractions with you today. And I hope that this helps you to think about ways that we can use, see fractions in drawings and models and think about putting them together, and how we can also think about when we're working with fractions, how close we're getting to one, and building on by ones to make, to add fractions together and make new fractions. So thank you so much. And now um, my friend, Miss Gaudette, is going to take over and work with you through the next piece. Thank you, guys. All right, everyone. We're going to be working on some problem solving together. If you have not already done so, go ahead and make sure you have a paper and pencil or else that you have uh, downloaded the actual task, which is the buttons task we're going to be working on today. So we're going to be looking at some patterns. And let's think about those patterns that we're having with our buttons. So uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and work through this. We're going to be doing a modified um, marking the text. And then we're going to be working through the problem. Make sure to pause me if you are just have a paper and pencil when we start working through the problem so that you have a chance to answer that before we go over it together. All right, let's get started. So we're working on the buttons task. Gina plays with her grandmother's collection of black and white buttons. She arranges them in patterns. Here are her first three patterns. So let's look at those patterns. Hmm. What do you notice? I notice, right, the black button in the middle. Huh. And then I notice they have some white buttons. Is there anything going on with those white buttons? Right? I see some of them. It looks like it's going in three directions. We can either go to the left, to the right, or it's going up. Do we notice anything else about those patterns that are going out on the sides or up? Right? We have that, that it looks like in pattern one, we have one on each side. Pattern two has how much on each side? Ah, I'm glad you guys noticed that pattern before I told you. Thank you. We have two on each side, and then pattern three has what on each side? Three. So let's look at our first question. Draw pattern four. Do you think you could do that without my help? All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to flip these over so I have an open document. All right, so let's look at pattern four. I did forget to do my modified uh, marking the text, so let's go ahead and do that. I know I am to draw pattern four. Am I given any quantities that I can circle? The patterns that came before it, so should I circle those? I can hear some yeses, I can hear some noes. It's up to you. I'm gonna circle it because that gave me the information I needed to continue that pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and circle it. I'm gonna circle the one because the one 
the two and the three helps me. And I'm going to circle pattern four. Why do you think I circled the numbers and not the actual pattern? Thank you for yelling that out. Yes. And pattern one, we had one on each side. Pattern two, we had two on each side. Pattern three, we had three. So pattern four is going to have how much on each side? All right, I don't, I'm going to color in for my black button. So then how many would we have on each side? Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Does this match yours? Great. Now let's look at the next question. How many white buttons will be, does Gina need for pattern five and six? So we need to know how many, how many what? Black buttons? Nah, it's white buttons. And then pattern five and pattern six. And then it says explain how you figured that out. So again, on our explanation, are we just going to just talk it through, write a quick couple, two words, three words? No. Remember, when we are asked to explain, we need to write in full sentences. And we need to explain our thinking. So let's, before we get into pattern five or six, what do you think our explanation should be based upon pattern one, two, three, and four? All right, right? We had kind of started to go over that. So we know that each side, and I'm going to put in parentheses, the left, right, and top has the same number, I'm going to abbreviate, of buttons as what? Thank you for saying that out loud to me. As the pattern number. Number. Did we forget anything out in that explanation? Each side has what? Same number of buttons. What does that mean? We did. We forgot one thing, right? So I'm going to put a little carrot to insert white, white buttons. So let's look at pattern five. I have my black button. Sorry, my, I'm using blue. So I'm going to say it's my blue button. And then how many white buttons would we have on each side? Five. Thank you. But how many total? Because wasn't that our original question, how many white buttons? So how many white buttons would we have? Right, some people are like, I don't even need to draw it, but we're going to draw it just in case to prove if you're right or wrong. One, oops, let me separate this out so we can see the difference between the two. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Did that work for you? What did you get? What did I get? Did you get 15 with me? So I'm going to say pattern five. Five has 15 white buttons. And how did I get that? Did someone notice the pattern? Right, thank you. We have five, five, and five. Or three times five. Thank you. So let's really fast think. Without drawing, what would 16 be? Thank you. So you would have the pattern number, right? The six. We'd multiply it by our three, which would give us, did you get the same answer? 18. All right, so we answered those questions. Let's see if you got the correct answers on the rest of them. 
So let's start here. How many buttons in all does Gina need to make pattern 11 and explain? So explain is very important, right? We always want to make sure we can talk about our thinking that we're doing. And then how many buttons in all for pattern 11? So we had here a pattern that we were doing. What could we do to figure out pattern 11? Great, thank you. We could take three times 11. Perfect, I'm gonna do that. So pattern 11, I'm gonna start a new sheet actually. So pattern 11, I would take my three times 11 that you gave me, so my answer would be 33. Oh, I hear you guys yelling at me like, no, no, no. And I heard a Sue say, yup. Did anybody see what we did? did? I did wrong here? Right? It says, how many buttons in all? Did it say how many white buttons? No. What did we forget when it says in all? It's the black button, right? So I have to add on one more button. So our total is 34 buttons. And again, why did I write buttons there? That's our quantity, that's our unit, what we're working on. So we have to have here our answer. Now, could you explain to someone how we got that answer? I'm gonna write it in a sentence. Our work here kinda shows it, but then sometimes it's just random numbers. And the random numbers sometimes just, people don't understand your thinking and they don't know where they came from. So if you said that I had three sides of the pattern, multiplied by the pattern number will give me the total, maybe not totals, you're right, total is not the good word, will give me how many, how many buttons on the sides. Then, yep, thank you. Then I added in the one black button. Okay, so we were able to explain pattern 11. Based upon that, let's see if you're able to give me how many we have, the buttons that we have for um, 24. So Gina thinks she needs 69 buttons in all to make pattern 24. How do you know that she is not correct? They already told us she's not correct. So we gotta think back to our pattern and try to figure that out to see if she is or is not. Because they're gonna ask us the next question. You guys are like, they already told us that she's not correct. But we wanna prove it. We wanna, don't wanna just say, yeah, she's not correct. And how many buttons does she need to make pattern 24? So let's go ahead and underline that we are doing pattern 24 and then how do you know that she is not correct? And then the next question is, is how many buttons does she need? All right, so let's start with another sheet. So hopefully you have this written down somewhere. Okay. Gina thinks she needs 69, so I'm gonna write that down. Because to me, information is very good. Does not, this means does not equal pattern 24. So we wanna prove that, that that is correct. All right, so what is the pattern that we need to help us solve for 
24. All right. So we take the pattern number, right? We take the pattern number, and then what do we do to it? Thank you. Will give us what we need, right? We have to add in that extra one. So I'm going to add in that extra one. Will give us our total. So let's go ahead and think, because remember, it said how many buttons. It didn't say how many white. It said how many buttons. So let's go ahead. 24 times 3. So 25, 25, 25 is 75. But I had three extra, so I'm going to take that 3 back away. So that's 72. Am I saying that right? And then a total of 73. So I'll, let me do this the proper way. So we had that with 72. I'm going to bring down my plus 1. And then I had 73. And then it said, how do you know she is not correct? So let's go ahead and prove uh, with our words how she is not correct. So we have to take, OK, we needed to take the pattern number and multiply it by the three sides. Thank you. And add the black middle button. So I multiplied 24, thank you, times 3, then added 1 to get 73. 73 does not equal 69. With my words and my work, I was able to prove that Gina was incorrect in her thinking. And then maybe the step you could take now is to actually try to figure out where she went wrong with this. What was her mistake? That's something that I'm going to leave you with. And next, we're going to move into some uh, literature and a read aloud with you that you guys are going to love. Hello, mathematicians. Today, let me move this out of our way here. We're going to read a story called Spaghetti and Meatballs for All, a mathematical story. It's written by Marilyn Burns and illustrated by Debbie Tilly, and it was published by Scholastic. One fine day, Mrs. Comfort was busy tending lettuce patch in her garden. The lettuce patch in her garden. You know, it's been a long time since we've seen the family, she said to her husband. You're right, answered Mr. Comfort. He, stretched out, he was stretched out on a bench doing what he liked best in the vegetable garden, reading a cookbook. Maybe it's time for a family reunion, said Mrs. Comfort. A wonderful idea, said Mr. Comfort. Hmm, let's see. Menus, menus. Dinner for two, serves four to six, banquets. How many people would we be serving? He asked. The Comforts called their children. They called their parents. Mrs. Comfort called her brother. Mr. Comfort called the next door neighbors, who were almost like family. Everyone could come. That's 32 people all together, including us, Mr. Comfort said. What could we possibly fit in our oven and still feed 32 people, he wondered out loud. Why not make your famous spaghetti and meatballs, asked Mrs. Comfort. Good thinking, said Mr. Comfort. 
Now what about renting some tables and chairs, asked Mrs. Comfort. She got out the telephone book. Look at the cat is ready for dinner already. Two weeks later, the big day arrived. Mrs. Comfort got up very early and spent all morning cooking. He baked 16 loaves of garlic bread and made eight pounds of fresh pasta. He simmered eight quarts of spaghetti sauce and rolled 96 meatballs. Mrs. Comfort picked all her ripe tomatoes, cucumbers, and lettuce for a salad. While Mrs. Comfort waited for the tables and chairs she had rented, she drew a seating plan. She got out the dishes, the silverware, the glasses, the tablecloths, and some vases. But when the rental company arrived, they were one chair short. Don't worry, said Mr. Comfort. You'll think of something. Mrs. Comfort found a folding chair. See, there she's got it. Now the tables were ready. Each had four place settings, four chairs, and a vase with a lovely cut flowers. Mr. Comfort came out of the kitchen balancing eight plates of celery and olives, one for each table. Just after noon, the Comfort's daughter and her husband arrived with their two children. Welcome, said Mrs. Comfort. Come sit, said Mr. Comfort. Let's push two tables together. So you can sit with us, suggested the Comfort's daughter. But there won't be room, said Mrs. Comfort. But there is, said Mr. Comfort. There's plenty of room and plenty of garlic bread. Have you ever done that with your family, like when you've gone to a restaurant and you needed more space for your family, so you pushed tables together? But I wonder if that's going to cause some problems for Mrs. Comfort. Because look here, she had it all set out so four people could sit at eight tables, and that would be 32 people, which is what they were going to have. Hmm. Let's watch and see what happens. Everyone was just about to sit down when a car pulled into the driveway. Mrs. Comfort's brother and his wife, their daughter, her husband, and their twin sons all spilled out. Welcome, said Mr. Comfort. Sit down, sit down. Oh, let's push over two more tables so we can all sit together, said Mrs. Comfort's brother's wife. The Comfort's daughter and husband got up to help. But that won't work, said Mrs. Comfort. You're so right, Mr. Comfort said. We'll have to push two more tables together. But that won't work either, said Mrs. Comfort. You're right, said Mrs. Comfort's brother's wife. Make way, shouted Mrs. Comfort's brother and the Comfort's son-in-law. They each carried over a table and put them side by side. You don't understand, Mrs. Comfort sighed. My plan was, but no one heard her. Everyone was too busy. Hmm, so let's see. How many seats do they have now for people to sit at? And how many people are there? I notice a lot of extra chairs stacked up, so are they going to end up having enough seats for everybody? I wonder. Looks like right now they might be able to have 12. One, two on the end, one, two, three, four on this side, and four on the other side. So four and four is eight, and two is ten, and then two at this end. So that's only 12 people that can sit, and they've used all their tables. Save some of that garlic bread for me, a new arrival called. Me too, me too, me too. Three more voices piped in. Well, look who's here, said Mrs. Comfort's brother's daughter's husband. It was the Comfort's next door neighbors with their daughter and their son. Hello, hello, said Mr. Comfort. So glad to see you. Have a seat while I get more garlic bread. But there's no place for them to sit, said Mrs. Comfort. Don't worry, said Mrs. Comfort's brother's wife. We'll divide these tables into two groups of four. Go ahead, Mrs. Comfort said, but I'm telling you when. You fret too much, said Mr. Comfort. Bread, anyone? Hmm, so what about now? Are they going to have enough seats for, they had 12 people and four more people came. So how many people are here now? 16, that's right. But they still are expecting 32. How many chairs are they going to have? They have a group of four tables, and they'll have another group of four tables, and you can put two on each side. So two, four, six, eight, and two, four, six, eight. 
well, that's enough for who's there, but I wonder where everybody else is going to sit. When all of the tables had been rearranged, everyone sat down. See, Mom, the Comfort's daughter said, it worked out just fine. Mrs. Comfort sighed. Hiya, 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 boomed a familiar voice. Mrs. Comfort's father's, Mrs. Comfort, Mr. Comfort's father, mother, and their little terrier strolled in. Hello, Grandpa. Hello, Grandma, the Comfort's daughter shouted. Oh, dear, said Mrs. Comfort. Where are they going to sit? So we have two more people. So now we have 18. No problem, said Mrs. Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Comfort's next door neighbor. If we just push all eight tables into one long line, there'll be room enough for everyone. Actually, Mrs. Comfort began to explain. Absolutely, said Mr. Comfort. He was carrying several big bowls of salad. Better move fast or this salad will be really tossed. So let's see, how many people are here, do you think? Do you remember? I think it was 18, right? And then how many people can they sit if they do this long arrangement? Because they can get eight people on each side if there's eight tables, right? And eight and eight is 16, and one at each end, so 17, 18. So 18 will be enough for who's there now, but I wonder what they'll do next. No sooner had everyone gotten settled than Mrs. Comfort's mother and father drove up in their yellow convertible. Hello, Grammy. Hello, Gramps, the Comfort's daughter shouted. Mrs. Comfort put down her fork. Oh, dear, she said. Don't worry. We're all family, right? Gramps said. Let's just split this long line of tables in two. There'll be plenty of room for us to squeeze in. But it still isn't going to work because... Mrs. Comfort started to say. A bowl of salad slid into her lap. Sorry, said one of Mrs. Comfort's brother's daughter's twin sons. Mr. and Mrs. Comfort and their 18 relatives and neighbors were finally all seated. They passed the salad and bread. They sh shared the celery and the olives. And when they heard a cheery, hi, everyone, most of them just held on to their plates. The Comfort's son and his wife pedaled in on a bicycle or two. Their twin daughters rolled in on skates. Didn't I tell you, Mrs. Comfort said, there's not enough room. No problem, Mom, said the Comfort's son. We'll just divide these two lines of tables into four pairs. Okie dokie. Wait, wait, you're all forgetting something, said Mrs. Comfort. We're out of salad over here, said the Comfort's daughter. Don't put any tomatoes in mine, said the Comfort's next door neighbor. Is there more garlic bread, asked Mrs. Comfort's mother. Who got my silverware, asked Mr. Comfort's father. Hey, Mrs. Comfort's brother's daughter's son said to his twin brother, that's my bread you're eating. Get your fingers out of my salad, the Comfort's son's daughter said to her twin sister. Don't play with your food, said the Comfort's son wife, son's wife. What did you say, asked Mr. Comfort. I said, Mrs. Comfort said. Beep, beep. A big red van was parked at the curb. Out jump, jumped Mrs. Comfort's sister with her husband and their triplets. All three of the triplets had brought their boyfriends, who were also triplets. Now do you see what I mean, Mrs. Comfort asked. Where are they all going to fit? Well, my dearest, said Mr. Comfort, I haven't served the spaghetti yet. We'll just move, move a few chairs, reset a few places, and there'll be plenty of room for everyone. I give up, said Mrs. Comfort. She sat down in her chair, and she did not budge. I say we divide the four pairs of tables into eight single tables, Mrs. Comfort's brother said. He and his wife moved one pair of tables apart. The triplets and their boyfriends moved the other three pairs. You see? Mr. Comfort said, it all worked out. I see everything is back exactly the way I had it, said Mrs. Comfort. I knew you'd think of something, said Mr. Comfort. Now, how many meatballs would you like? All right, so this is a good book for us to talk about some vocabulary. Um, we can use it to think about area and perimeter. So we're going to come over here to this chart that I have and think about what happened to the area and perimeter 
of the table groupings that Mrs. Comfort and Mr. Comfort had. So just a reminder for you, you've probably learned these words already. Um, area is the su surface size. So this image is a nice image. It can kind of show you this part here would be the area. And the perimeter is the distance around a two-dimensional shape, so all around it. And we can use formulas to figure out area and perimeter, um, and then we'll see how those work on the model. So area equals length times width is an is a equation you're probably familiar with. And perimeter equals two times the length plus two times the width. So if we drew out what Mrs. Comfort had on her plan, she had eight single tables. And she could put people on each side, one person on each side. So the area of this table, there was one on each side. The area of this table would be the length, which is one, times the width, which is one which just equals one, right? So each of these tables had an area of one, and we had eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we times that by eight, we get a total area of eight tables. Now she never changed her tables. She just changed, or the, her guests just changed the way that they were, re they were arranged. But what happened to the perimeter when they did that? So let's see what the perimeter was up here. Perimeter is two times the length and two times the width. So, or you can just add up the sides, right? One and one, these are both the length and these are both the width. So the perimeter of each of these tables was four. And how many of those did we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So our perimeter, was 32, right, for this model, because each of these tables had a perimeter of four. So when, she, when they pushed all of the tables together in one of the examples, what happened? We still had our area of each of these tables being one, right? So one, two, three, four. So the length was four, and the width was one, two. So four times two is eight. Our area still stayed eight. But what happened to our perimeter? This side was four, and this side was two, and this side was four, and this side was two, right? And perimeter is two times the length, so two times four, plus two times the width, so two times two. So eight plus four equals 12. Our perimeter went down from 32 to 12. So that really changed how many people could sit at that table because the perimeter got much smaller. So what you could do at home is you could work on finding all of the seating arrangements that were in our story. Um, we have some graph paper that you can download, or you could kind of just draw it on paper like we did here. Um, but your challenge is to find all of the seating arrangements with the area of eight, because the, uh, there were eight tables in the book, and figure out the perimeter of each of those different seating arrangements. And then you can decide and think about, is Mrs. Comfort's arrangement the best arrangement? Why would hers be better than one of the others? Or is there another arrangement or another number of tables, which would give you a different area, that would give us the perimeter of 32? So you can investigate all those different arrangements just by thinking about these formulas and drawing out your table groupings like that, if you can remember how they went in the book. Or you can make up some of your own for your family. Alrighty, that was our story for today, and now Miss Sears is going to teach us a game. All right, and um, that game actually is going to be using area, so that's that's going to be a great little lead-in to what we're going to be doing right now. I'm just going to put this kind of back over here to the side, so we'll have that. 
So the game that we're going to play today is actually a game that you can find on ucubed. Dot org. Um, it's a site uh, from Joe Bowler, and it is actually called How Close to 100. So one of the things that you're going to notice right away is I sort of have a grid right here that is made out to be 100. Well, how do I know that it's made out to be 100? I could check and see. I can count my rows, and I can count my columns, and I could actually try to figure out like what you were talking about using that area, that idea of of being able to times that length times that width to know that my area is actually 100. I have 10 rows, 10 columns, 10 times 10, 100. So All right. Length times your width. There's yep. your formula. Perfect. Right there. Perfect. It worked just fine. So let's go ahead and explain how this game works. This game is usually played with a partner. My partner is going to be Miss Obenchain. And we're going to um, be rolling some dice. Um, and what we're going to do, once we roll these two dice, you're going to need two dice. Um, if you do not have dice at home, uh, there is a dice template that we would have that you could download to, get a, to make a dice at home. Or you could simply maybe make no, numeral cards, um, one through six. You could even go one through nine if you want to. But remember, the bigger the numbers, the closer we're going to get to that 100. <laughs> so you want to kind of stay within a range mm -hmm. um, because what we would like to do is between the two of us, we're going to try to see how close we can get to that 100. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll the dice. When I roll the dice, whatever two numbers come up, let's say I have a 1 and a 3, I'm going to have to make an array on this grid that's going to equal the area that I would need to fill in for that equation, 1 times 3. So I would be able to fill in either 3 going across, but remember that commutative property that we talked about before. I could either go 3 across and go, you know, on my row, or I could go 3 down. However it may be, it just depends on the side lengths that I want to be able to go and do that. Now, once I go ahead and, and do my turn, Miss Obenchain's going to roll the dice, and she's going to get another two numbers, and she's going to do the same thing. What we're going to try to do is fill up this grid as close as we can to that 100. So we're going to have to have a little bit of strategy implied in this because we don't want to hurry up and fill it up all right away. We might want to start at one of our corners versus maybe starting in the center. So we want to have the least amount of squares left, Least right? amount of squares left. And we're going to be two different colors. So hopefully you can see these colors as we go. And as we roll our dice, we're also going to be creating an equation down here so that you can kind of see how we're determining how that area is going to look. All right, you yeah. ready to begin? The other thing I was going to mention is that if you don't have dice or you don't have the down, that download of making the dice, you can also make a spinner with six spots on it. Absolutely. Or we have a spinner you can download on the website. And um, this also will be um, available to you to download, too. It's the actual handout that you could um, have. And a variation of this could just be that instead of us playing together, it could be I'm playing on one of the grids and she's playing on one of the grids. All right. Ready to begin? Perfect. I'm going to go roll the dice. I got a 2 and a 1. OK, so that means that I have to do 2 times 1. And if we know our uh, identity property, that's just going to be 2. So somehow I need to fill in 2 squares. So remember, as I said, this commutative property works both ways. I could either go 2 across and fill in those 2, or I could go 2 vertically and fill in those. We want to get as close as we can to that 100. I'm just going to start. I like to start in the corners because, again, if I started in the center, I would be losing a lot of space. I might have more space available than I really don't need to. All right, Ms. Obenshin, you ready to go ahead and roll your dice I'm while ready. I'm finishing up this? Because I'm not sure how Ooh, much time we got. I got four times four. So... I think that's a square number, if that I remember is. that. It is. Four yeah. fours is 16. So it's going to make a square shape because it's a square number. This is how you know it's a square number. <laughs> right. I think that I am going to start in the corner also. That seems like a good idea because if I just chunk out a big 4 by 4 in the middle, we might not be able to use some of those. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. 
So how did you know to go for, like, what, what were you thinking on the rows and the columns? You were thinking? I was thinking that I got a four for my length and a four for my width, Perfect. or four times four. That's what I thought. I thought that would be a great way to be explaining that, and so we know that's where she's at. All right, we've still got plenty of space, so let me roll again while she's filling that in. And you don't have to make it all perfect in there. Um, this says two and six. I have to remember that I only have a six-sided dice. I thought it looked like a nine, <laughs> but I only have a six-sided die. So this one is going to be, I'm going to start with the six first because it seems like I'm lucky on the twos today. Maybe I ought to be playing with that. So I have, let's say, a six times a two. I'll have to figure out if that's going to be my length or my width. But six times two, that's just a double. Six plus six, so we're talking 12. All right. I'm going to stay in my, area, in my little range of my corner as much as I can. So let me think of how maybe I could do it. I'm going to try, I'm going to try and go by twos down. Let's try that. Let's see if that will work for me. So if I have six rows of two in each row, I would have 12. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And while I do that, so I got to go down six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and two over. I'm just going to do like that, because that might make it a little bit quicker so that we can get some more of these on there. You are not going to believe what I rolled. Did you roll a six? Five times Another square five. number. Another square <laughs> number. And five fives is 25. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So she's going to have another so square. So I'm going to have another square, and it's going to use a big space of this. Let me think here. Ooh. Really I don't know. Do you have I... enough to go in here? I don't think so. No. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to have to go up. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, it's going to leave us with a skinny little spot at the top. Ooh, but... maybe I, I'm good that I'm rolling those lower numbers. All right, well, we'll do it. One, two, three, four, five. So you have a... One, two, three, four, five. A width of five and a length of five. Yep. And All I'm right. going to have another perfect square. Is it... All right, let me do mine. I have a three and a six. So let me think about that. Where could I go with that? Ooh, I see a nice little chunk right here that has a three. Mm, yeah. And I know I had the six last time because I rolled that six. So let me see. I'm going to do uh, six times three. So six times three. Well, I'm not really sure how I could count that, but I guess maybe if I patterned it out, I might be able to figure that out. <laughs> so I have three. And I have a width of three, a length of six. So I have three plus three is six then 9, then 12, 15, 18. So 6 times 3 is 18. All right. So I got 1 times 3, which is good because then maybe we can just use up a little bit of this, these skinny spots that we have. So I'll go across 1 and down one. 3. All right. Let's try to do uh, maybe one more, maybe one more turn each. Let's see if we can get very close to that 100. We'll have to write our... Examples of her. I have two times five. I have five and a two. Let's see if I have enough room to do that. Mm. Oh, I might I just might about right there, have it down yeah. here. Yeah, because I have, look, five and I have two columns right there mm. that I could do. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And while I do that, let me write that over here on our equation. So we had two rows times five in each row was 10. And I got two times four, so I'm gonna do this spot up here. All and right, you can write it over there. I just squeezed it on the bottom. Oh, there, two but. times four and you had how many, eight? Yeah. All right, let me roll one more time. I got a one and a two. Hey, I might be able to make it. One row of two would be two. Let's see if she's not gonna make it. <laughs> Nope, I got a five times six, and we don't have that much space. We don't have that much so space. So how close did we get to 100? We got to 97. That was pretty darn close. We got one down here, so 96. Awesome, awesome. Well, 
We want to thank you for joining us today on At Home with APS, and I hope that you really enjoyed playing the game with us today, learning a little bit more about area, and um, we thank you for joining us, and hope you have a great day. Thanks, mathematicians. Thanks, mathematicians.